Well, good morning and happy Tuesday. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I'm out here in Forks, Washington at the beautiful Salduck River. It's way out here. You see a little blue dot right there. Seattle's over here. So I'm way out in the middle of nowhere and uh, hanging out with some high school friends. Going to have a good time. Uh, Going to be back to the Phoenix area probably next week sometime. I'm going to take my time heading down, but I'm staying at their Airbnb and I want to show this to you right here. This is their property out here in the, on the, on the river. And, uh, it's just fabulous. I put the link in below. So, uh, they're doing quite well with their Airbnb, but we're taking it over this week. We were going to go fishing, but as you can see, the water level behind me is pretty low. So we're going to look at rentals today and try and see if mom and pop are getting rid of their rentals now that the moratorium's over. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. You can maybe make some broad assumptions, but tell me if you've seen any rentals in your neighborhood that went up for sale. Because um, it's kind of hard unless you get into the actual um, uh, data from the, from the county to pull and see something that was a rental and now is for sale. So I don't have uh, the skill set to do that, I guess. So I'm hoping the Cromford group will start pulling those numbers pretty soon. But we're going to take a look at it. So I want to show um, where we're at with our seven day moving average here. I'm going to pull it up in a second. And we're just basically seeing things after the holiday get right back to normal. And uh, of course, not that we know what normal is anymore. But here you can see uh, that yellow line is the um, homes under contract. And these are listing. So we had 4th of July had the dip. Labor Day had the dip. And that's just the way it works. We're getting back to kind of normal. I am seeing some indication that listings are starting to show up. We have uh, 7,500 homes on the market this morning, which is pretty high for a Monday. And it leaves open the possibility that we will have 8,000 homes on the market over the weekend. And that uh, remains to be seen, but it looks like it's trending that way. If I look at the Cromford report, and I look at the uh, um, the listings that we have there. Let me pull this up. Um, that's really kind of the only way that I think we can see um, what's going on with listing counts by price point. You can see here we had a little dip up this week, week ending September 11th. So that's that's last week's data. Um, so we're not even to 2005 there unless we go into certain price points in a certain city. So I thought, well. Let me pick a city that we know has a lot of rentals that I have seen an uptick in listings, and that is Tempe, Arizona. And I'm going to pull it up here in just a second. And if we look at Tempe overall, you can see that their listings come up. But then if I take a look by price point and I go between, I'm going to say $300,000 to $500,000, which is kind of the price point for rentals right there, we do see a jump. We're up there. We were above 2005. Now we're slightly below that. Does this mean after the rental moratorium, which was here, that we're starting to see more homes put on the market? There may be other towns that I can dive into and take a look at, but the thing that, that we're really trying to watch is the rental moratorium. You know, they weren't collecting rent for almost a year and a half. And so now that period of not paying rent is gone. It's behind. So are they kicking them out? Or are they settling with uh, new payment plans for these renters? And if they do get the home ready to rent again, are they going to put themselves through that? Or are they just going to give up? It's probably going to be 50-50 because if you're sitting there with a lot of equity and you've had the pain of not getting any rent for the month and it's been draining your savings, you're probably just going to cash out, take the equity and, and, uh, and capture the savings. So, you know, who knows? Uh, it's We haven't seen an overall uptick in listings yet uh, across the board. So um, that's not, not something uh, that I've bumped into. Oh, and I wanted to show you one more thing here. Um, show you, bear with me. Remember, I'm doing this on a laptop and it always gets kind of wonky for me. So I'm used to being home and just... Uh, um, clicking from screen to screen. Here we are. This is this is one of my favorites. And this is, you're going to hear a logging truck go by from time to time. This is closings over list price for the past um, 30 days. And 
what it is showing showing us here is that we're now sitting at 52 percent going above list but the good news for buyers is you go down here and you're seeing that between 300 400 thousand that number's dropped to 13,500 the amount that they're paying over the list price remember it wasn't only three months ago that that was 20 thousand dollars and last month it was fifteen thousand dollars so those numbers are getting slower so one thousand five hundred and fifty five homes between three and four hundred are only being outbid by an average of thirteen thousand five hundred so the bidding wars are starting to slow down ever so slowly and uh, we're not seeing as much uh, much of a beat down as we were seeing which is good um, is it sustainable? Is it going to stay that way for a while? I don't know. So now what's the best week to buy a house? Nationally, wait till you see this. Nationally, according to Realtor.com, they are saying that in October, first week of October, is the best week of the year for home buyers to purchase property. They base this off of um, data that they've looked at going, going through 2018. So there's a buying frenzy that happens in the summer. And uh, uh, so you're out there, you've got a lot of competition. By the 1st of October, you don't have a lot of competition. People have already moved to get into the school district. A lot of people don't want to buy in October because it means they're going to have to move right before Thanksgiving. And it gets even worse in November. But the inventory is better the first week of October than any other time of the year. So might be something to consider in looking at the data and that's national numbers. Um, it might be a decent time in Arizona to pull the plug. So um, we'll take a look at that and continue to follow it. And it'll show up on our seven-day moving average as more and more homes come on the market. And then we look at that yellow number and see how many are actually being gobbled up by, uh, by buyers. But uh, interest rates are still low. Uh, we don't have... Um, um, there's... A couple cities where it's still a huge advantage for sellers and one of those is Fountain Hills that's a higher price point the snowbirds are starting to show up they're starting to come up from the Midwest and purchase those homes so Fountain Hills uh, that's a bit of a buyer beat down out there Chandler's still pretty rough um, I'm not seeing huge increases in listings in Chandler we're seeing the three hundred to four hundred thousand dollar price range just completely dry up um, it's gonna be between four and five hundred but this morning as I looked at a particular neighborhood in Chandler, I saw that there were four homes that had price reductions, anywhere from below $400,000 up to a million. They had to come in and reduce their price. So uh, that's a over exuberance by price, by sellers thinking they can get whatever they want. And so they had to pull back. So, so that's what's going on out in that market. Um, this live stream will play again this afternoon. And uh, I'm going to be here tomorrow. But guess what? I don't think I'm going to be sitting out here because it's supposed to rain buckets. So everybody take on the day and have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday.